Welcome to the newest episode of Beyond the Fame with Jason Fraley. I'm your host, Jason Fraley, picking the brains of the top filmmakers, musicians, and artists of our time. Liberty DeVito, longtime drummer for Billy Joel, performs at the Fillmore in Silver Spring, Maryland this Saturday night for the annual Rock and Roll for Children concert to benefit the Children's Inn at NIH. I spoke to Liberty about his biggest Billy Joel hits from You May Be Right to Uptown Girl and everything in between. Hey, Liberty DeVito, thanks so much for joining us on WTOP in D.C. My pleasure. Now we're talking because you are promoting the annual Rock and Roll for Children benefit. It's going to be um, on June 11th um, with a, a big concert. I think White Ford Broncos will be performing. Uh, it's going to be over at the Fillmore in Silver Spring. Uh, but of course, it's, it's all to benefit uh, the Children's Inn at NIH. Uh, how did you get involved with this? Uh, I guess John Belinke calls you up and, and, and the cause is, is, uh, is, is really an offer you can't refuse. <laughs> Well, I met John. I met John at a rock and roll fantasy camp uh, a bunch of years back, and I did the first one for John, and did a couple of them after that. I mean, it's been running since two thousand and four, so it's been around for a while. And um, so, yeah, I love doing it. Um, I'm also involved in a thing up here in New York called Little Kids Rock, giving uh, instruments into schools where where the uh, music curriculum has been taken out. So I believe in children. I have a five-year-old. I have older daughters too, and and I, I love kids, and um, I believe in the healing of music. You know. Yeah. Can do you? Are you able to uh, speak on the children's in at all at NIH? The work they do. I know. I know it's a place where you know. I guess that they can stay and families can stay while they're getting treatments. But did you? Are you able to speak on that at all? Um. Yeah. Well. Um. I. I've never been to it. You know, the National Interest Institute of Health. I didn't realize what, <laughs> what NIH, I kept seeing NIH for a while there. And I thought, what is NIH? I, I looked it's it up. In the, it's been in the news a lot lately. <laughs> yeah. And they keep saying NIH. Yeah. NIH, you know, yeah. uh, National Institution uh, of Health. So yeah. um, it's a great, a great thing. I mean, um, it, it's kind of like, I guess, Ronald McDonald House, mm-hmm. but without the clown. Right. Um, so, you know, it's pretty cool. Families get to um, stay with the children. And the kids get to be kids instead of patients. Nice. And I know every year they, they get some big artists to come in. And we interview them every year. I think we've talked to Ricky Bird, uh, Little Steven, <laughs> Van Sant, uh, yourself now. Uh, yeah, they always round up a, a collection of different people that have played in all sorts of different famous bands. Um, w- will you actually be coming in and performing? Yes, I'm coming in. Uh, Ricky Bird is going to be there. Uh, and a bunch of other friends of ours, you know, will be playing along with the white Bronco, you know, it's funny, the white Bronco, you know, I had a Bronco in 1974 <laughs> and now Bronco has been re-released by Ford again. And every time I saw featuring white Bronco, I thought, Oh, he's going to have a raffle for a white Bronco. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a local, it's a, it's a cover band, a nineties cover band. And obviously the name of course is the, about the biggest, you know, news story of the nineties, the, that OJ Simpson white Ford Bronco. So that's there, the, there you go. That's the nineties. Right. There's the connection. But uh, yeah, it's me a, a great night of uh, 90s the, tunes. Uh, but I, it's, is it all going to be 90s tunes or is it going to be all kinds of music? I'm sure. Well, uh, a lot of the stuff that we do, uh, I guess you may be right, came out in the 80s. I know I'm playing yeah. you may be right with the band. Ricky's going to do I, I Love Rock and Roll. Yeah. So uh, yeah, definitely some 80s stuff too. Yeah. So it's going to jump around. Awesome. Uh, well, awesome. Well, let's, re- without further ado, you mentioned, you may be right. Of course, the Billy Joel hit you, you've played drums on so many of, of those Billy Joel's. Like if, it's almost like, you know, close your eyes and pick a favorite Billy Joel song and you're probably the drummer. <laughs> on I, it. I think I, I think I played on 23 of his 24 top 40 hits. 23. The only one I, the only one I didn't play on was piano man. Ah. <laughs> that was before me. Right, right, exactly. But I, you, you lay claim to a ton of the other ones. Uh, well, real. Yeah. I mean, we can go into a couple of them if you got time. But uh, real quick, um, before that, just, just tell us about you know ha- how you. I know you grew up in you know you were born in in New York City and I guess around Brooklyn. But how did you actually first meet Billy Joel up and around that area? I actually uh, grew up on Long Island. My I was born in Brooklyn. Okay. My father was a New York City cop and he was uh, stationed in Brooklyn, so he didn't want us to live here, so he moved us out to Long Island. But uh, when I was like 17, uh, I played in this club called the My House on Long Island. And uh, I was in a band called the New Rock Workshop. Billy was in a band called the Hassles. And sometimes both bands played together. And I would watch Billy and he would watch me. You know, so when it was time for us to get together 
and he was coming back to New York and he needed a, he wanted a New York style drummer. Uh, Doug Stegbeyer, who was the musical director for Billy at the time said, well, you know the guy, you know, so we kind of knew each other by sight, you know, but didn't know each other mm -hmm. to hang out yet. But so he knew me already and I knew him. So it, it, it's been a long relationship. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess I, I'm just trying to double check. Like you said, Piano Man predated you, but I guess your first one you played on of his was the 76 album Turnstiles, right? Is that right? Yeah. And yeah, that, you know, that had Say Goodbye to Hollywood, New York State of Mind, like so many hits on that. But what was it like finally getting to, to do that first album with him? I guess it was, what was his, maybe his his fourth, I guess, but your first with him. Uh, yeah, my first with him. It was great. I mean, uh, we did it on Long Island and, um, you know, it was kind of a bomb, really. I think it sold like 50,000 copies. Appreciated in hindsight. <laughs> yeah. Well, the next album that came out, The Stranger, was the one that put him over the top. The Stranger and, was uh, massive, man. That was in, what, massive. 77? And that, remind us, that had uh, Moving Out and Just the just Way You Are. Just the Way Scenes from a Italian Restaurant, Going to Good Die Young. She's Always a Woman to Me. Yeah, man. Yeah. Wow. Come on. That is an all-timer album. All right. Well, then speak to that one, I guess. more. That's probably more important to talk about. <laughs> well, the Turnstiles had great songs on it. The only missing element uh, during that album was the producer, Phil Ramone. Mm. I mean, the now he had the band, because the, the playing is great on the on Turnstiles, just wasn't produced like with, with, when Phil came in on The Stranger. It, you could hear the production difference. And Columbia Records really got behind. Of all those ones we mentioned on The Stranger, um, you know, from a drumming perspective, what is the what is the funnest one to do? I'm trying to think. Well, I guess you pro it probably needs to be an I get upbeat one. I guess just the way you are. Scenes from Italian Restaurant are a little more mellow, but <laughs> is scenes it only is the good. good Die Young or Scenes is good. Well, it's only the Good Die Young is cool because I played with brushes in the studio. You play so, with what in the studio? Brushes. You know, instead of drumsticks, you play with. Uh, brushes wait what i see i'm not a drummer but my wife is a musician she'd appreciate that but what do you mean by brushes well you ever hear a, a band and they're playing and you just hear the drummer it's like sliding it sounds like like a scratching kind of yeah yeah those are brushes and and so oh. i played all the good die youngest played with brushes wow where, um but since we're a tiny restaurant you know it goes through a lot of phases the brenda and eddie part is fast that's true it picks up yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, I write about all of the songs that I recorded with Billy and what my memory was in the studio in the book that I, I put out about a year and a half ago called Life, Billy, and the Pursuit of Happiness. And um, <laughs> I, I, all the songs are in there. If anybody wants to know what it was like to record them. Life, Billy, and the Pursuit of Happiness. And we can get that on Amazon or wherever, I guess, right? Amazon, yeah. Audio, uh, Audible has the audio book. I read it. it. took 55 hours to read it. <laughs> Is that your way of saying you don't want to go through album by album in this interview? Just pick up the book? <laughs> <laughs> Just pick up the book. Yeah, get the book. <laughs> Billy wrote the forward. You know, it was the first time I actually heard what how he appreciated what I did. You know, right. when you're in the business like we are, you're never told when you do something good, you're only told when you do something wrong. Yeah. You know, like that really stunk that part. Can you do something else? <laughs> you, you know. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Well, yes, we will spare you and everyone uh, going through the, the chronological journey. Um, pick up the book, everybody. Um, but I guess just one more final question on that front before we bring it back around to the benefit. Um, of, of all the songs after the ones we mentioned, uh, yeah. is there anyone that that is like uh, particularly like is Uptown Girl really fun to play or Big Shot or I mean, I don't know. Like, what, what do you have a personal favorite that is every every day on stage? You, you, you'd be you'd be pissed if they cut it from your set list. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I, I, I have a band now, Lords of 52nd Street. It's myself, Richie Kanata and Russell Javis, who in Billy's original bands are recorded with him. You know, Richie plays the saxes on it's, 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 uh uh, just the way, just the way you are, and and yeah. scenes from an Italian restaurant, really good day on, all, all that, and we do all the Billy stuff. We have a guy that sings yeah. the Billy's parts and plays piano. One of the my favorite songs to play is um, Zanzibar because there's a really fast jazz swing thing in there. That's on the Fifty Second Street album, right. which is really cool. I like I like to play that song. It's a challenge, I you know. Love it. That's yeah. that's cool. That's cool. And yeah, I mean, and I gosh, I mean, I don't want to give away my age, but I was more of a, um, I was more of the, you know, the river of dreams, nineties era. So, and you were, you play, you play, <laughs> you play, 
Well, but 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 all those remember those three greatest hits came out around then too, and so right. I was that felt in a weird I don't know how to explain it, in a weird way that sort of felt like my my music too. Tell her about it, and for the longest time, all that stuff. You know, I grew up yeah. on that, so I, I yeah, love you know, I love it. You mentioned Uptown Girl. I remember we recorded that song. I I was walking with another member of the band, and I and I looked at the other member of the band, and I said, "That's the dumbest song he's ever written." <laughs> and I turned around, he was standing right behind me. And he what? said, you're right, it is the dumbest song I ever wrote. What he heard you say, what 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 made you say it was dumb? Just the beginning, how it's like, uh, like no, the, the lyrics are dumb. Or? Uptown girl, she's living in an uptown world, right. you know. A little repetitive, you thought? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Shows what you know, right? The whole thing. That's right. Smash, That's right. right. Cool, cool. Well, you played with Billy Joel. You do. You have Lords of Fifty Second Street. Um, encourage everyone to go check that out. But um, r- remind us real quick some of the other, um, not just Billy Joel, but some of the other famous artists you play with. You know, Meatloaf and Carly Simon, who I guess is just going to go in the Rock Hall this year. Um, I mean, it's it's r- remind them that you know your career is not just Billy Joel. Here. <laughs> no, 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 no. There was this other guy that played with a band called the Beatles, and his name was Paul McCartney, I think. You might, you might have heard of him. <laughs> might have heard of him. What, yeah. what song did you play with Paul? There's a song called uh, Beautiful Night that uh, we recorded. Uh, it's on the latest uh, version of uh, what's a Flaming Pie that came out. It, there's a box set, and it's in that box set. It was recorded by me, then it was recorded by Ringo, it was recorded, you know. He did it different versions. Right. No, yeah, no, no pressure that, you know, it's the, the guy that has played with Ringo his whole life and now, now Liberty. <laughs> now it's me, yeah. It's like, <laughs> Take that, Ringo. Yeah. Uh, you're, the fifth, you're the fifth Beatle now. Um, yeah. But that, that kind of comes full circle, right? Because didn't you teach, I read you taught yourself to play drums by after when you saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. I did. I did. That's how I, I learned by playing the Beatle records. Yeah, I don't know how to read music. Don't know how to, don't know anything about music except playing drums. Really? So if someone put sheet music in front of you, you'd just be deer in headlights. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's kind of cool, though, too. But that, that, that just speaks to your ability to just, you know, feel, feel it, feel the music, you know? Well, there's like, a lot of guys that are like that, especially oh, drummers. Yeah. You know, drummers, like you just said, you feel the music. Drumming is more feel than anything else. You know, it's, it's not what you play. It's how you're playing it, you know? So, I mean, myself, Buddy Rich. Uh, uh, Larry Mullen from U2. We all don't read music, you know. Ringo. Right. A lot of the greats. You don't need, yeah, it just sh- there's more than one way to skin a cat, as I say. You know, you can either come in from the classically trained reading music, sheet music, or you can just feel it. And uh, so many of the greats like yourself just feel it. Um, well, it's worked out well for you. Um, you. Real quick, before we run, you mentioned, um, I do want to bring it back around to the benefit, but real quick, yeah. you mentioned the little kids rock and that's sort of, that, that'll be a segue for us. But uh, tell, tell us about, about what that organization does. Little Kids Rock was started by a man named Dave Wish. Uh, he was a school teacher in California in one of the worst sections of California. And after school, he saw kids hanging out. So he said, he played guitar himself. So he said, uh, look, I'll give you guitar lessons if you promise you come, you know, uh, all the time to the, to the lesson. So it turned out with 20 kids, he started out with 20 kids and now almost 750,000 kids have gone through little kids rock. It puts the instruments back into the schools where the curriculum has been taken out. The music curriculum has been removed. And uh, if a kid plays guitar, uh, you know, the school teachers actually learn to play and then they teach the students. And if the kid stays for a year, he gets to keep the guitar. You know, um, it's, it's done like the same way um, th- this uh, uh, charity does. It, it, it's, it's funded, you know, with a gala and, and right. you know, donations and stuff. It's a great thing. And so that's based up in, I guess, New Jersey, right? Yeah. All right, right. Um, but then down that and, and that thanks for doing that. That's great work for all the all the kids up there and, and all the the far reach that that organization has. But then down here, of course, bringing it back full circle, uh, yeah. with the rock and roll for children here, John Belinky's outfit down here. Uh, reminding everyone it's gonna be a, a big concert. Uh, dancing. There's like an open bar. It's at, it's at the Fillmore Silver Spring. And oh, actually, we should mention, isn't there? There's like a big auction every year, right? Do you know any yes. of the items? Or I don't just know. In I don't know any of the items, but yes, there's a big, um, a big auction. You know, um, uh, uh, Rock and Roll Foundation for Children is the largest non-corporate donor uh, for the um, children's in it, NIH. Ah, okay. So yeah. There you go. They put their money where their mouth is, for sure. 
They sure do. Well, I just, uh, just so we have it for the sake of the interview, I've just pulled up some of the auction items. We have a autographed guitar by Cream, by Prince, Tom Petty, uh, Guns N' Roses. Uh, there's some Bob Dylan, Aretha Franklin, B.B. King, all, all sorts of stuff. Um, Cindy Lauper. Head on of, over to, to the website. Um, it's rockandrollforchildren.org if you want to see all the different items that are up for auction. Um, and I guess I guess before we run, Liberty DeVito, I'll just uh, speak directly to our listeners of why they should come out. You know, I pretend I'm not even here. Just talk directly to them. Hey, guys, you know, hey, guys, come on out. It's going to be a good time. Guys, come on out. It's going to be a night of fun music, dancing, eating, and it's to benefit children who are, you know, a lot of these treatments, uh, they're serious what these kids are going through, sometimes life-threatening, and you are helping them by having a good time. It's great. You get tickets of uh, Fillmore uh, Silver Spring website. That's where you get the tickets to come and come meet me. I'd love to meet you, you know. Hear some good music and having a great night and all the while knowing in the back of your mind that it's for a really good cause. I mean, you, you can really can't beat it, can you? Uh, cool. All right, cool. Well, Liberty DeVito, thanks so much for joining us and doing uh, some trips down memory lane and all these songs. I'm sure you've been asked about them a million times, so we appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> all right, Jason. Take care, my friend. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us on Beyond the Fame with Jason Fraley. Remember to hit the subscribe button and give us a five-star rating if you like what you hear. We'll see you next time. I wanted to take a second to tell you about an app I really enjoy. Living in the D.C. area is great, and Podcast D.C. gathers all of the local shows that I like all in one local app. Health, sports, local news, politics, and so much more. Podcast D.C. is the new local app with hundreds of D.C. area podcasts to choose from. I can earn exciting rewards just for listening and share the podcasts I love instantly. Available in the App Store or in Google Play, listen local with Podcast D.C.